What's up everybody? I'm Isaac the Northwest Videographer Photographer and if you want to know how to go from this to this then stick around and watch this video because you probably already got all the equipment you need to achieve a nice cinematic look like this. You just need to know the fundamentals behind achieving the look that you want. And today I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. We're talking photography and video fundamentals, specifically lighting. Let's get into it. Okay, so today I'm going to show you one of the most basic and fundamental lighting styles and as far as I'm concerned, if you're only going to take the time to learn one lighting style and one lighting technique, then this should be it. It's called the Rembrandt look. Now this is probably one of the most commonly used looks in all of Hollywood and all of photography. It's a base look that you can go to no matter what. It'll always look good, it'll always be acceptable, and then you can build your own style upon it and then grow from there as a photographer or as a videographer. Brief little history lesson, the reason it's called the Rembrandt style is it's named after a 16th century Dutch painter named Rembrandt who became famous for being the first painter to really uh, use and emphasize realistic looking shadows in his painting. Uh, the thing he became coined for was called the Rembrandt triangle and as you can see here, it is just a little triangle that appears on the cheek of the subject and that's how you know your lighting is right. So right now I have an example of what not to do and how not to light your subject. It's not that this looks bad or anything, it's just this isn't the look that we're going for and this is not what we want. So right now I just have a key light right in front of his face. Just directly flat on harsh lighting. I'm off to the side of it so it's not affecting me that much. Uh, the way I look, but as you can see here through the GH5 view, uh, his face is lit very flat. This is not the look that we're going for. So now this is the look that we are going for right here. And all I did was take the same key light that we were using and I put it, I moved it from directly in front of the subject off to a 45 degree angle. All you need to do is just put your light at a 45 degree angle from the subject. Uh, and it's just that simple. As you can see now, we've got the Rembrandt triangle starting to form on his cheek here. That's exactly what we want. You've got nice dramatic shadows. Uh, this is good. This is a single light look. If you only have one light, this light is just, if you only have one light to work with, this look is perfectly acceptable. Uh, but we're going to take it up another notch and we are going to use another light and we are going to use a two light setup uh, to finish this lighting style off. But again, all we did was move the key light from straight on to a 45 degree angle. Now, the problem here is that he's kind of just floating off into darkness here. Uh, it's really dark and you can't really see what's going on with his shoulder or his ear or anything like that. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to put a light on the back side at a 45 degree angle. So again, just 45 degree angles. You got a key light off to the 45 degree angle of his face. You can do right or left, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is our base look. This is the look we want to build off of. This is the base Rembrandt look, but we're going to go ahead and add another light and create a nice rim effect. So uh, as you can see, I've got this rim, this light back here. Again, 45 degree angle, but it's at the opposite side of the key light. We're creating like a, like a kitty corner effect of diagonal. So whichever side you have your key light on, you want to put your rim light on the opposite on the opposite side. So uh, let's go ahead and turn that light on. And now we finished our look. Got a nice rim light here. You can see his ear now. Uh, his jawline is nicely highlighted and accentuated. Um, it highlights the shoulder so he stands out from the background more. It gives us more depth of field. It gives us a uh, more finished professional look and this is the look that we want to go for in the end. Now this was only two lights at a 45 degree angle at opposite ends and boom. If you were using a flash and you're putting it directly on your camera, all you need to do is take it off your camera, put it on a C stand and move it off to a 45 degree angle. It's just that simple. And like I said, if you only have one light, don't worry. The one light look is perfectly acceptable, but with two lights, you can get an extremely professional looking headshot, very cinematic. Like I said, this look will work in any situation. It doesn't matter if you're just taking headshots, if you're filming a video, if you're doing YouTube. I mean, this will change the look of your content more than a new camera, more than a new lens, 
I really briefly I want to talk about lights. Uh, you don't need to go out and buy a 120D aperture light and spend you know, $1,000 on a light. If you're in a controlled studio environment and you can black out the lights, uh, just about anything will work. Behind me here, I've just got a cheap softbox kit with the regular old big curly bulbs, uh, like 100 watts. You can get a three pack of those with a, uh, you can get a three pack of those with a boom for like $90 on Amazon. Uh, the key light that I'm using that is remote controlled, which I absolutely love here, is this Godox 60 watt that comes with the softbox and a kit that was less than $200. So, I mean, for $300, you can get a four light softbox kit for your studio that will do pretty much anything you need and will handle all the lighting scenarios that you could throw at it. So again, don't think you need to go out and spend a whole bunch of crazy money on uh, a key light because that's just not the case. I'll leave links below to the stuff that I'm using. Okay everybody, so you just saw how easy it was to achieve a completely cinematic look for either video or photography. It's a base look you can build upon using any kind of scenario. Uh, like I said, you see this over and over again in TV and cinema. Next time you watch a TV show, take a closer look and look for the Rembrandt Triangle. There it is. There it is. I hate, hate backwards camera mode. Uh, but anyways, yeah, next time you watch TV, look for the Rembrandt Triangle. So anyways, if you guys want to see more content like this and this video was helpful to you, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Like the video. Make sure and subscribe if you're not already. Alright, that'll do it for me. See you in the next one.